A um, couple of reminders here. First of all, I want to just start out by thanking a couple of people that I have not done in the past. And so first I want to thank Kavan. And you guys met him. He's my partner in crime, I say. But he's the one that comes here every week, keeps me encouraged, sets me up, gets all of the, the background tacky stuff done. Because, you know, I don't know how to do any of it. And then I want to... I really want to say a quick thank you to a brother. Um, he lives here in Belay. I've known him for a really long time. His name is Cortez Quinn. And he is actually the one that spurred me to do Joycast. And um, he believed in me when I actually probably didn't believe much in myself that I could do this. So I want to say thank you for that. And let me see if I'm forgetting anything else. Of course, I want to thank Jesus. He's the reason. And again, we're doing it for him. Let me see. I have a lot to share with you guys. And also, I wanted to say that some of our topics, I have a whole lineup for probably like the next 12 weeks, different guests, different topics. And I wanted to say that some of them, there'll be, they'll be times where they're sad, but they're not always going to be sad. There's going to be fun topics and we're going to laugh and we're going to, we just have an array, just a, a different stories that, that we're going to be sharing with all of you. So please tune in if you can. We need more um, listeners out there. Share with your friends. And if you would like to share your story with us, I would love to have you sitting right here. You may notice a different background. We're in my tea room today and I'm so happy about that because sometimes I just, want to do something with it and so this will be our regular background it may change a little bit but we will be here in the tea room and you're always welcome to come and have tea with me and so let's get started i want to introduce you to my just to my great wonderful brother here james i'm not going to try to say your last name because i always mess it up so i'd like to introduce you to him and today's topic is perseverance. After we met a couple of weeks ago, I was not only blown away, but I was like, wow, what was my take? What did I take away from it? And his story is just that perseverance. And so you get to hear it for yourself. And I know that you're going to be encouraged. And so we're just going to dig in right now. We're just going to start. Sounds so good. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes. Appreciate it. So tell me what year it took place. Uh, 1997, October. 15 years old. 15 years old. And I'll be 42 in August. Wow. Yeah. So go ahead and share with us. So, like we said previously, um, growing up, I played sports. I was into baseball, basketball, football. Um, was really good at it too. Right. Um, I shared the field with a lot of professional athletes that are currently playing now and, you know, played years ago that retired. I was always younger than those guys, but at the same time, I could keep up with, you know, their skill sets and things like that. So I had aspirations to one day play professional baseball. Um, I received scholarships at a young age, ninth grade, 10th grade. Um, I had professional scouts coming out to watch my games and mm -hmm. things like that. Fast forward to my sophomore year, um, school just started in September. In October, I got to my car accident, literally five minutes away from my house, uh, right on 37th here in Vallejo. Um, to that night, it, it was one of those situations where I really didn't want to go out. Mm -hmm. um, my friend, he was at the house. He was anxious to want to go out. So we called a buddy of mine who actually was a little bit older, who had a car and driver's license, things like that. Um, and we get on the freeway. I didn't have my seatbelt on it. And just a matter of moments, the car just started like going out of control. Right? So for me, it was a scary situation. Right? Where were you sitting? I was actually in the back seat behind the driver's side. Okay. So I leaned up on the headrest and I asked my friend who was driving, you know, what's going on? 
and he didn't know. Um, next thing I know, I closed my eyes, and it was just pitch dark. And I just felt this pressure on my chest. So as I tried to push up, not knowing what it was or what's going on, uh, come to find out, I was ejected from the back seat, went straight through the windshield. Uh, I had an open skull fracture, head injury. The car flipped down the hill and landed on top of me. And that's what was on top of me when I was actually trying to push up. Um, it crushed my spinal cord from the front, from the pressure. So there's a perfect time and place for everything. As we were on the freeway driving, the paramedics were actually behind us. Wow. trailing the whole time wow. um, and their description was from a distance they said it looked like maybe a kid threw like a baby doll out the window but it was actually me oh being ejected goodness. through the front windshield so i was able to get the proper care and treatment in a quick you know time frame um the firefighters came they were able to pull me from underneath the car uh, put me back onto 37 on the freeway with a ton of lights. All I saw was just lights and just noises, right? My face was literally covered with red blood, like your dress. I had a huge hole in my forehead about the size of a golf ball, and that was from me going head first through the windshield. I remember my mom coming on the scene, crying, asking what's wrong, uh, and there was just this calmness that came over me. I can't explain it, right? After all that, I told her, I said, no, don't cry. I said, I'm going to be okay. I said, I'm not going to die. Can't tell moms that. <laughs> right? Exactly. But, you know, that was the thing. I, you know, I told her, I said, I'm not going to die. I said, my head hurts really bad right now, right? Um, so they airlifted me to John Muir and Wanna Creek. They treated me for my head injury because that was the most visible, you know, trauma. So I went in and they treated me for that, came back out in the recovery room in ICU. I started losing sensation in my leg. So I told my mom, I said, can you move my leg for me? And she goes, you were just moving them. I said, I can't move them at all right now. So they rushed me back into surgery, and that's when they found out I had a spinal cord injury as well. So they did surgery on that. They stabilized my spinal cord. They put two rods on my back. Uh, they had me in this bed. So now, you know, I'm dealing with the head injury and the back injury. So they wanted to keep me as stable as possible in the bed. They didn't want a lot of movement going on. When I tell you, though, the love and support that came to that hospital after that happened, probably over 300 people. Oh my God. And I mean, you could just feel the, like I said, I didn't know everything that was going on, but I felt the, just the positive vibes and I felt the love mm -hmm. and I felt the community just surrounding not only me, but my family, right? Mm -hmm. Uplifting them and helping them. So I was in John Muir, the doctors told me, you know, you'll never walk, chances are you'll never walk again. Um, you'll never be able to probably drive, you probably need 24 hour care, <laughs> right? Because of the brain injury, right. um, you never have kids. So, I mean, they're telling you all these things, right? Based off of the diagnosis that's taking place. Right. So to hear that from a, a 15 year old, I mean, it was like devastating. You know, you talk about for real depression, right? right. To the point to where it's like, I can't live like this. And I was just able to get in the shower and get myself dressed without even thinking twice about it. Now I have to have somebody pick me up just to put me in the bed, take me out the bed, put me in the car. It was tough, right? So after that, they ended up transferring me to Kaiser Vallejo after about, I don't know, maybe two weeks in that job here. Um, I started doing my physical therapy and things like that. And you know, from there, it was just a matter of regaining my strength back, right? They were teaching me how to transfer from my wheelchair to the bed, how to transfer from my wheelchair to the car. And these are things like, you know, you, 
before it happens, you don't really think twice about how easy it is, right, for us to do these things. But when you're in this situation, it changes, like, your whole, like, perspective. Like, I know this is hard to put on a stop, right? And, and it was like that. And I told my mom, I said, no, I don't, I really don't want to live like this. Um, and she told me, she goes, you know, I can't, I don't know how you feel, but what I can say is, Things will get better. If things don't get better, then you can do whatever you want to do, right? And moms know best, right? <laughs> and things got better, you know. And like I said, I mean, there were some bumps in the road, and you know, I have my highs and my lows, but I had more highs and lows. And that's kind of like the background as far as my accident goes. Um, I was going through my rehab. Um, I ended up Going back to school, I was able to graduate with my class. Uh, I did homeschool the rest of that year and just persevered through it all. Um, what was your driving force? My driving force was just seeing the support that I received from my family. They didn't give up on me, and I felt like I owed it to them to not give up on them either, right? And that's what it kind of just kept me going. Even the doctors saying all those things. I mean, when you come from a sports background and you come from like an athletic background, a lot of times you don't really take no for an answer. Because the whole point is, as a competitive athlete, you want to try to prove the opposition wrong, right? So I would use that as motivation, just, okay, they said, I wouldn't drive again. I'm going to show them and prove to them I'm going to drive again, right? Um, I'm not in, I won't be in my right mind. Or, and the only reason I'm laughing is because he drove here today. I drove here today, <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, um, graduated from college, got my master's degree, been holding down a job for 13 years, you know, government job at that. So, just all those things that they said that wouldn't happen or possibly wouldn't happen, that was my driving force to say, you know what, I want better for myself and I want to make the best of the situation. So let's get real here. Thank you for sharing that. Oops, there's my new iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. God, it's great. Yeah. You talk. This is real life, guys. Yeah. So, Hearing your story, so many things pop out of me. And at what point, if ever, did you become angry? Shortly after, um, and almost throughout that little journey over the span of maybe you know six or seven years, it was hard. You know, you go out and you see your friends who play on the same baseball team as you, that you were just out there with, and they're going to practice, and you're either watching from the sideline, or you decide to just go home because it was like torture, right? Like, I'm not gonna sit here and torture myself type of thing. Um, just, like I said, being able to bathe, having somebody have to pick me up, put me in the shower, and things like that. I mean, it was literally like almost 24-7 care, you know, I mean, I could feed myself and things like that, but just, just that feeling and, and, and knowing that, you know, here I am using this wheelchair and it's reminding every day, right? I'm seeing it with my eyes and angry, sad, you know, depressed. Oh my all these like emotions it's like and like I said you know at 15 years old this this a lot but at the same time I was able to use all that and turn it around right so I was able to take these negatives and these feelings of anger and depression and things like that and I was able to flip it to like positivity gratefulness you know looking at what I can do right? And things that I'm striving for to get, just setting goals, right? And you set these goals for yourself and as you do that, you start realizing, like, man, 
looks a little too bad. So, I know the first time we talked, I asked you what was it like the first time you had to go down 37. Yeah, um, sadness, you know, um, anxiety. Were you afraid to be in cars? I was definitely afraid to be in cars. I did not want to be a passenger in a car I at imagine. all. You know, I mean, there would be times where I would sit in the car and just start crying, oh, right? Just God. driving on the freeway and just, you mm. know, it, it, it was tough. I mean, I didn't want to be anywhere near anybody's freeway, streets, none of that, right? Because it was just replaying over in my head. Right, just and now it becomes a control thing. Yep. Exactly. Letting anyone get in that driver's seat yep. and drive you around again. Exactly. And that was a, that was something that I really had to like get over because again, I'm putting my life in somebody else's hands. Right. I already did it once, and it wasn't good. So to do it again, yeah, it was it was definitely tough. I would say for the first maybe year, just riding you know, the car. But to answer your question though, going down 37, I would always try to avoid it, to be honest. You know, I mean, it, like I said, it, it just brought back, it brought me back to that night, right? And it's like replay. It's just like replaying it. And as you're, you know, looking at it and and he's talking over here, you know, doing what he does, right? Um, so it was tough. I mean, like I said, I didn't want any parts of, and the crazy part is I'm literally five minutes away from 37. That's the freeway that I get on, right? That's closest to my house. But like we talked about before, I said, you know what? The time that I was driving on 37, and it hit I'm actually driving in this car right now by myself with my wheelchair in the car. Before, I didn't have the luxury to just get in the car and just go drive somewhere to clear my mind or, right. you know, just to get away. I would always have to rely and ask somebody for that assistance, right? So I looked at it as a positive. I said, you know what? Right? I have the freedom to get in this car and drive on this freeway, right? I can go anywhere right now if I want to, right? And after that, I started looking at the positives. And it's all about like perspective, right? How you, how you look at things and how you do things. I mean, you could stay in a, in a state of uh, like negative thinking. Like you said, control. You could stay in that place. And who knows where I would be at right now if I let that allow me to control, you know, my feelings and how I look at things. But I just looked at everything as like positive. I said, man, doctors told me I wouldn't drive. Mm -hmm. And I'm, here I am, you know. Yeah. And ever since then, I kid you not, it's never been an issue. Yeah, I, every now and then, the enemy will try to throw something out there. Another question. The day that it happened, when the day approaches the following year, does are you are you reminded? Kind of like the anniversary? Yes, the anniversary. Uh no. I, it's crazy because my parents uh anniversary I believe is the following day. Wow. Their wedding anniversary, right? Wow. It's the following day. And I've never really been huge on, you know, reminding myself, oh, you were in an accident this day, right? Um, I know some people that they celebrate it, you know, and because it's another year of overcoming the adversity and the obstacles that they went through. I mean, not so much. My son was born on the 15th of mm -hmm. my parents' anniversary, so it's kind of, I'm like, I look forward to that day more so than, you know, the day before, so. Well, before we get to that, and like that, yeah. I wanted to ask you, was there ever a time where you were mad at God? Because uh, well, so many people immediately get mad at God. I have my questions. 
questions. You know, you always have that why me type of thing. Um, and you probably hear this a lot too, but I would always say, well, why not me? Right? You kind of flip it. Mad, I wouldn't say mad, but I you know, like I said, it was just question like, man, what did I do to get put in this situation? What what am I doing or what are you doing to me to basically, you know, get whatever you're trying to get out of the situation? And I realized so many people that I've like touched just with you know, my testimony and yes. the people that I come across, the people that I know, the people that I don't know, um, running into people in the grocery store and, you know, they're just talking to me and I'm encouraging them and not even knowing that I'm encouraging them, right? I mean, <laughs> pushing my son through, in, through the grocery store and the shopping cart because we're shopping and people are just like, you know what, I don't know you, but you're like, a real inspiration, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what really got me about you is I think I met you probably in about two about seventeen. About seventeen. Um, I was at an event at the high school and you were the DJ. Yeah. And that's when that. I met you. Mm -hmm. And there was just something about you that was so sweet, mm -hmm. that was so kind. And ever since then, I just <laughs> like love you. And I didn't know uh -huh. why you were in the wheelchair. But when I started Joycast, and I said, Lord, you know, the purpose is, is to give ordinary people like me, you know, like us, mm -hmm. who have gone through something, a voice, yep. Yep. you know, yep. to let others know who are going to or maybe going through it, you know, to give, to give a voice, yep. number one, to you to share your story, right. but to help others because others are encouraged by what we go through. And so, like I said, the perseverance part, and now listening to it again, it's like I think about, man, how you forgave. Because yeah. you had to forgive a yeah. couple of people, yeah. you know? Um, you know, you didn't stay angry. You didn't stay mad at God. There's so much that we can draw and pull out of, right. you know, your experience. Right. Right. And just to know that. You know, like when you first sat and told me, I was like so broken hearted. <laughs> but you said it with a smile on your face. And I was like, wow. That, you know, that's the touching part for me. And then I think about people who have legs, who have the use of their legs, and they're more constricted almost. Yeah, they kind of enable themselves. Yeah. And then, like, for you, who you can't, you can't use yours. Mm -hmm. But you're so positive, you're so encouraging. Right. It just right. encourages me that like no matter what I go through, you know, I can get through it. And I, I remember your story that day in the kitchen. Yeah. I was like, man. <laughs> and how long we've been trying to get together? For Several while. weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, but um, you have just you just like changed, you know, my thinking on so many different things. And perseverance is so important it is. because it's so easy to give up. That's the easiest thing to do. It's give easy up. to just give up and yeah. stay mad and stay stuck and yeah. not move forward. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. didn't let you know you didn't let that that happen. And like I said, there's something so special. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. can drive, and they told you you may not. Right. So many of the things that they told him that he might not be able to do, that he may not be able to have children, and Tell us about your baby. Uh, so my son, you know, I wear his chain every day. He was born October 5th, 2020. <laughs> and, I mean, he's, that's my life, you know. Yeah. That's my world. And you mentioned the joy cast, and that's what, what I find joy in. You know, <laughs> just, just him. He beat me. That was my with my special question for you. Yeah, <laughs> Where have you found joy, you know, through through your experience? Well, I find, well, the thing is that, like I said, it goes back to the doctors telling me, you know, I wouldn't have kids. Yeah. That's a huge deal in the spinal cord community, right? A lot of fathers that are paraplegics aren't able to have kids. Um, and some are, right? But I took that as, man, 
I want to have a family, kids, you know, things like that. Not that I was in a rushing time soon at 15, but just looking at the long term. So I find joy in the doctors not are telling me that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and my son being here, and now it'll be four in October. Wow. That's like How amazing the best, that. best feeling ever. How amazing that you beat all of those. Yep. Yeah. You know? Yep. You beat all the odds. And yep. um, how do you feel about baseball? Can you go to games now? Can you watch it? Can you? Was that hard to go yeah, back that to was hard too. I was mean, it? yeah, you yeah. know, like I said, I played football, I play basketball, so watching it is hard because it just kind of reminds you of, you know, we start thinking, man, I could have been out there, or I should be out there, right? Um, but now I'm just grateful that I can do those things, that I'm in my right mind to be able yes. to go to a game, right? Or be able to afford a ticket to go to a game. It's like, those are things now that I look at and not so much so dwelling on, you know, what could have been or this is my reality right now, right? And it's a good reality. There's a lot of positive things that are going on for me right now and I'm just appreciative of all that. Show us a couple of things that you're doing. So I'm working on writing a book, right? Because um, like you said, a lot of people see me and a lot of people don't know everything and there's even more to just the everyday struggle that you know i was dealing with right um so yeah i'm, I'm working on that um getting my son you know he likes baseball he likes sports too so just kind of training him and getting him you know acclimated to sports and things of that nature so that's that's been another huge uh, thing for me and just just work, you know, trying to advance my career and beautiful. So, um, does your son ask you why? Is he old enough to ask you why? It's funny because you know he's starting to get to that point now where he's kind of curious, and you know, the other day he says, "Dad, can you walk?" I said, no, daddy, daddy can't walk right now. I said, I got to use this chair to get around and keep up with you, right? I said, so, I said, you know. Yeah, you just, I just you, love you. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, he, he's asked me a couple of times. It's kind of like you could tell his wheels are spinning, yes. right? I said, no, but I said, daddy's strong. Yeah. You know, he's going to be there for you. And, and, and now you just... Take care of yourself. You don't need anybody's help. I don't need help. I live on my own. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so wonderful to hear that. How's your mother and your father? They're good. Great support system, I'm sure. Really good support system. Uh, I always say I wouldn't be, I just thank God for giving them the, the heart and the spirit that they have. But if it wasn't for them, to be honest, I'd probably would not be sitting right here at all. And with my family support, and it's just everything just happened. It's like all the pieces were just, you know, right there. They all fit. And it's like everybody had a role. Mm -hmm. Everybody played their role. And that's why I'm here today. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm beyond blessed. <laughs> I'm beyond blessed. And wow. Wow. I'm just so grateful to know you. I'm grateful and, to you. And, and well, I remember in church when I saw you and I gave you a hug and I was like, do I ask him? Do I not? Because some people don't want to share, you know, you have to be, well, you have to use discernment and be careful mm -hmm. because, you know, people are still going through the pain of whatever got them there. Right. Right. And so for me, I've got to be careful, but thank you for, you know, just being so open. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Me. I mean, that's what it's about. Like you said, if my story can help one person, yes. that's good. Yeah. If it can help 10, 100, yeah. that's even better, right? So that's what it's about, just 
going through it and then just showing people that and just persevering through it. And on the other side, good things can happen. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. much. <laughs> and this is our message for today. As you heard his experience, sometimes I have a hard time saying your story because we're more than just our story. And I struggled with that going through my own thing. Was like, it, it's, it is a story, but it's not all of who I am. And it's not all of who you are. Right. And like the song that we sing over and over in church, there's more to the story. And God is doing more and more in your life and mine. And um, this is a part of it right here. And I know that you're going to encourage people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so thank you. And is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, I mean, you know, we talk about perseverance, right? Mm -hmm. And like I said, life isn't perfect. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to go through different things. I'm, I'm going through stuff right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> no smoke. Don't it's, like what it's you It's like, you know, outside of this, you know, just other personal things. But at the same time, I, it could be easy for me to throw in the towel right now, right? But you just got to keep going. You just keep praying. Just keep believing that things, you know, will turn around, and then they will. The key is just try not to give up. Thank you. Yeah. So, I hope you're encouraged by his message today. And I know that I am, and I'll never forget you. Never, yeah. ever, ever. And if there's anything I could ever do for you, I'm here. Definitely. You know, yeah. it's just a talk or you know just whatever i'm always here for you and so this is our episode today for joycast in our messages perseverance and again if you have a stare a story that you would like to share tell the world about please get a hold of me i'm gonna use this handy dandy ipad now <laughs> and you can go to ask.joycast at gmail.com or joy in the morning, 31 at gmail.com. The second one. The second one. Yeah. The second one. Sorry. It's hard to see because there's so little. But um, yes, I'd love to hear from you. Like I said, we've got a few really great episodes coming up. And again, just when you tune in, please subscribe. We need more subscribers. <laughs> Help your girl. <laughs> and so thank you again. Thank you for tuning in to Joycast. And we shall see you next Tuesday. And I wish you the best. And I love you. And have a great day. Take care. Thank you, brother. Thank you.